Welcome to Patch Notes, everyone, the weekly gaming news roundup in the style of game updates. Let's see what got nerfed or buffed. One game was missing from that PS5 event last week that was supposed to be like a launch title for the system. Gearbox's Godfall, while nowhere at the event, did pop up on Twitter a little later on. The game will be coming out November 12th alongside the PS5 and also on the Epic Game Store on PC. While next-gen titles are getting price bumps, it seems this game will be $59.99 USD for PC, so hopefully that applies to the PS5 version as well. A trademark for Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered has popped up on Korean ratings boards. This is the actual trademark site, and here is the Google Translate version so we can go over it. This trademark itself was submitted by EA Korea, and it is for PC, while other platforms are probably planned as well. Definitely unsure when we could hear about this. Depends if EA is looking to get it out on time for the holiday season, or if maybe they're saving it until next year. But either way, it does exist in some form. While Sony did brag about how almost all of the PS4's catalog will run on PS5, it seems their older platforms are not getting the same love. Jim Ryan spoke with Famitsu on the topic of backwards compatibility, and he had this to say on it. We keep in mind the engineering specialized for the PS5 as we produce the device. In the midst of that, the PS4 already has 100 million players and we thought they ought to want to run their PS4 titles on the PS5 as well indeed. So we included compatibility with the PS4. While implementing that, we also focused our efforts on taking in the high-speed SSD and the new controller, DualSense, at the same time. So unfortunately, we couldn't reach the implementation of such compatibilities. We already knew Sony had little interest in backwards compatibility, but this really shows just how dedicated to the future they are. So I assume the current pandemic may have influenced this work allocation a little bit as well. Pictures have been surfacing online showing different measurements of the PS5. So let's start with the console itself coming in at a little under 19 inches tall and 12 inches wide. Here's the horizontal stand adapter you'll need if you want to place the console sideways due to its kind of large curvature. Sort of hooks on the back of the console and then cradles it along the curve. It seems both the Series X and S and the PS5 were kind of designed to stand up as compared to laying on their side. Jeff Keighley was nice enough to share these photos of the cables that will be included with the console as well. The power cable looks pretty standard as a power cable, but the HDMI cable looks very square, kind of unlike a lot of HDMI cables I've seen at least. We all know the PS5 pre-order situation was like horrendous, really bad, but Sony did apologize for the situation, saying, let's be honest, PS5 pre-orders could have been a lot smoother. We truly apologize for that. Over the next days, we'll release more PS5 consoles for pre-order and retailers will share more details. More PS5s will be available throughout the end of the year. So for example, both GameStop and Sony sent out notifications this week that more PS5s are available to pre-order. GameStop had both online and physical location pre-orders, while Sony sent out more of those emails for the pre-orders list they had already established. It's definitely good to know they've opened up more pre-orders, and they'll be trying to ship out a lot of consoles for the holiday season, kind of that market rush, but uh, what's that going to look like though? Ars Technica did a fantastic write-up, giving us an idea of what may be available in the coming months, because for that first wave of pre-orders, it seems Sony focused on the disk drive version as compared to the all-digital. These graphs show GameStop stock allotments in varying metro areas for last week, that first wave of pre-orders, with a heavy skew between the two versions. Even later Later on, Best Buy Canada's website showed 19,000 disc version pre-orders with only 3,000 all digital versions. So what's the deal? Well, my theory is that Sony is saving the cheaper all digital editions for store shelves closer to the holiday sales rush where people and especially parents are looking to get gifts for others or themselves. And that $400 price tag next to the $500 one is a lot more sellable in December per se, as compared to right now when they know people will buy whichever version is available to ensure they have a console on launch day. For now, we'll have to wait and just see how it all plays out. In terms of PS5 games, specifically Spider-Man, it seems those looking for a free upgrade will have to look elsewhere. Sony confirmed to Kotaku that PS4 owners of Spider-Man will not get a free upgrade for the remastered, as they have no plans of making it a standalone purchase. If you want to play Spider-Man Remastered on PS5, you'll have to get through the Miles Morales Ultimate Edition by buying it outright, or by a paid upgrade from the base game through the PS4 or PS5 version. Marvel's Avengers got its version 1.3.0 patch this week, introducing players to over 1,000 fixes for varying bugs discovered since its release. 
Can anyone say, wow, this game wasn't ready for release and shouldn't have been a live service game? Here's what scrolling through the notes over on their website looks like, and good lord, this game should have been delayed. I think this just proves the difficulties they had changing it from like a more co-op game to a live service game, and we, we all could see what it should have been. While the Doom Eternal Switch version was pushed back far beyond its initial release date, it seems we will see it very soon, according to executive producer Marty Stratton. At PAX Online, he had this to say about the game's progress. We're working to make it the best version of the game it can possibly be. So we've been working with Panic Button. They're also, like everyone, in work from home. It's taken a bit longer to get there, but we want it to be everything it can possibly be. It's very close, and we're trying to be very uncompromising with what it needs to be because there's a high demand for it. We will be talking about it again in the not too distant future. It is close, but I can't exactly say how close. With this in mind, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we see it at like the next Nintendo partner showcase. So probably October, I think they'll have another one of those. As if 2020 hasn't thrown us enough curveballs yet, one giant company just acquired another again. The news broke Monday that Microsoft had begun the agreement to acquire ZeniMax Media, parent company to Bethesda and the many studios under it. The article from Phil Spencer talks about Xbox's and Bethesda's history together in games and development, starting from Doom and Morrowind all the way to now. Todd Howard put out a statement about the acquisition with a very positive outlook. He says, like our original partnership, this one is more about one system or one screen. We share a deep belief in the fundamental power of games and their ability to connect, empower, and bring joy and a belief we should bring that to everyone, regardless of who you are, where you live, or what you play on, regardless of the screen size, the controller, or your ability to even use one. He also mentioned that Bethesda Game Studios has had their largest engine overhaul since Oblivion due to the technological advances of next-gen consoles. So what does this sort of combo multiplier mean for you as the consumer though? Well, Phil Spencer did specify that we will be adding Bethesda's iconic franchises to Xbox Game Pass for console and PC. And following a hint from the Xbox Game Pass Twitter, this went up on Xbox Wire on Thursday. Doom Eternal will be joining Game Pass on October 1st for console and Game Pass PC later this year. And I definitely assume we'll get more announcements like this in the near future. In terms of Bethesda's future projects, those will most likely come to Game Pass 2. Microsoft might not even make these releases exclusive, but rather present consumers the value of playing them on Game Pass on the more powerful Series X as compared to buying the games outright for other platforms. Games like Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, which are planned as PS5 timed exclusives, will still have that exclusivity honored, Spencer told Bloomberg. But he also said that we'll take other consoles on a case-by-case -case basis in regards to future future releases from Bethesda. So things that we really haven't gotten a lot of info on or even release times yet. More details will be coming about all these changes, but for now, it seems like any games that already had planned launches are gonna follow those plans. Keep in mind that Microsoft does not plan on stopping with just Bethesda. The more studios they add to their first party means the more games they can put on Game Pass. Both Microsoft's CEO and Phil Spencer said they are interested in acquiring more development studios in the future to sort of invest further into Game Pass, getting more value out of it, therefore signing on more players. Speaking of Microsoft consoles, the Series X and S pre-orders went live on Tuesday and it was definitely planned better than the PS5, but unfortunately plagued with broken websites and sold out notifications. Jeff Keighley gave us a summary of all the websites that went live and how they fared with the pre-order traffic. Many of them were not working, as expected. GameStop actually made a queue system for the Xbox, but it crashed as well due to overcongestion. So it seems there really was no difference between this and the PS5 pre-orders, except a, an official date and time. We're going to talk a little later about another launch that was also botched in the gaming space, and I'll provide a little insight there. Best Buy went live this week with the Series X and S's proprietary expandable storage cards. They will be priced at $219.99 USD for one terabyte of NVMe capacity. Larry Herb did confirm that this sort of storage will only be necessary for games optimized for Series X and the velocity architecture they're using for game storage. So any OG Xbox 360 or Xbox One games will still run fine off your current expandable storage solution. And by the time you need expandable storage for like the series only games, hopefully there'll be some cheaper options that come to market for maybe other companies or whatnot. Cause the only one they have right now is from Seagate. The end of an era is among us and yet all good things must come to an 
and the 3DS, Nintendo's backbone and money machine in the age before the Switch, has finally been pulled from manufacturing lines. They updated the 3DS family website with this statement, Please note, the manufacturing of the Nintendo 3DS family of systems has ended. A spokesperson from Nintendo told GameIndustry.biz that Nintendo and third-party games for the Nintendo 3DS family of systems will continue to be available in Nintendo eShop, on Nintendo.com, and at retail. And they have currently no plans to end any existing online services for the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. So it seems access to some great games will not be cut, but new consoles themselves will not be present in stores at some point in the closer future. It's almost time for a new Smash fighter to join the roster. This tweet showing a new ad in Japan for the second fighter's pass of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate includes a Min Min and a stop date of October 4th. So this means the new updated advert that would take its place on the 4th will most likely have that next character slot filled with a new fighter. So sometime between now and October 4th, we should have a Smash related trailer, direct, or maybe even both on our hands. Quick update on Ubisoft's two big holiday games, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, will be launching alongside the PS5 on November 12th in the US as it's doing the same for the Series X and S on November 10th. Europe and other countries can expect it on their PS5 launch date November 19th. It was also confirmed in a German Eurogamer article that they have bumped up the resolution and FPS, so that game will be running at 4K, 60 FPS on the PS5 and Series X. Running on the Series S, you'll most likely have the options to prioritize frame rate or resolution. On the other hand, the PS5 version of Watch Dogs Legion will be joining the other platforms and launching on November 24th. NVIDIA responded to angry consumers in regards to the RTX 3080 buying fiasco that happened on Friday. They put out a whole Q&A talking about what happened with their store, what they've done, and what they'll be doing about the situation. The TLDR is that the car went live on Friday morning only for most people to see an instant sold out sign. There was a lot of people bragging on Twitter how they were able to use purchasing bots to obtain large amounts of the cards for reselling. And it seems many regular consumers barely got any of that supply. Apply. Some people who went to brick and mortar locations like Micro Center were able to get the card, but those stores also had very little stock as well. Nvidia did confirm a couple of important things in the Q&A. They are manually reviewing orders to cancel ones that seem like bot purchases, and they would be changing the Nvidia store to prevent further issues with these cards and even future launches. Hopefully some more stock should pop up soon if they really are manually canceling some orders. In any case though, do not buy from online resellers no matter how much phone you have, there will be more than enough consoles and graphics cards in the coming future. We're still not even at the launch dates for the consoles, so you know you don't know how much stock they'll have for just walk-in purchases in November. Buying from resellers only encourages their behavior of reselling items way above their MSRP, so and if it's any way possible, please do not buy from them. Amazon has finally entered the ring with its new game streaming service, dubbed Luna. Very similar to Stadia, it's game streaming for $5.99 a month on varying devices. It will have Twitch support and developer channels like Ubisoft's here with their games. It has its own special controller, which is basically a purple Switch Pro controller that will have Alexa integration. More details will be coming at some point in the future, but until then, you can sign up for the chance to join the early access for the service and maybe see what it's all about. To end off this week, Jeff Keighley has announced the date for this year's Game Awards, Thursday, December 10th. While we expected the show to look different this year, the tweet specifically mentions three areas they'll be live from, LA, London, and Tokyo. I have a feeling it's going to be more of an online-based show, and they'll be switching like between venues for different announcements in the award, but nonetheless, I'm still very much looking forward to it. We've had some great games this year, and I'm definitely going to be some very interesting awards given out. We got some smaller, but still good releases this week. Hello Neighbor on Stadia. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition on Switch and PC, Serious Sam 4 on Stadia and PC, and Mafia Definitive Edition on PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and PC. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below about this week's news. Last week I asked you which console you wanted to pre-order. 
This week, I want to know if you guys were able to secure any pre-orders or maybe even get a 3080. I want to know for my console and my PC gamers, what would you get? Did you get anything? Are you just nothing? COVID has made online shopping more prevalent than ever, and retailers cannot seem to meet the traffic demands for neither the console launches or graphics cards. Amazon was kind of the only one that was really able to keep up with it, and that makes sense because they mostly do online shopping anyway. I'm very worried for kind of Black Friday and Cyber Mon Monday, seeing how these went when there's going to be more casual audiences joining the rush to get online purchasing done. And how do you feel about Microsoft acquiring Bethesda? Do you think it's a good or a bad move? Bethesda has been falling into a rut with some of their games, at least I think. You know, Fallout 76 had issues, even Collector's Edition had issues. They're doing a lot of weird mobile stuff, and ugh, it just didn't really seem like things were going the way they want to as terms of making games as compared to selling games. Microsoft lately seems to be really pro-game and pro-consumer, so I'm hoping the acquisition actually puts Bethesda back on track with making good quality games. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button, it really helps out, but if you didn't, leave a dislike and tell me what you think I could be doing better. I'm always looking for ways to make gaming news a little bit more enjoyable for y'all. If you want to see more, make sure to get subscribed and hit the bell to get notified of new uploads. As always, I'm your host Wingo Dang, and I'll see you guys next Friday.